everyone, so for today's video I'm going to be filming a how I sew and darn my point shoes. This video is for anyone that wears point shoes, anyone that is just interested in how I do it or needs some help or wants a different technique. It can be for beginners or non-beginners. Obviously if you are a beginner and you're inexperienced with sewing and you're maybe a bit younger I would recommend having someone there to supervise you and help you maybe. Um, I don't want to be responsible for anyone accidentally stabbing themselves with a needle or anything so definitely have someone there to supervise you if you're not super confident with sewing. But I thought this would just be interesting for anyone to see who wears point shoes and yeah I hope it's helpful. So I wear the block Euro stretch superlative point shoes and they're split sole I really love them I darn them like this at the top and my ribbons and elastics are also sewn on and I'm going to show you exactly how I do all of this now in the video and I really hope you enjoy the video hopefully you'll find some new tips and yeah I really hope you enjoy so what you're going to need is some wool I just use this knitting wool I got on Amazon. Um, I just typed in pale pink wool and this is just the one that came up. Some cotton, I just use the tonju one. It's specific for darning but I like to use this for sewing on my ribbons and my elastics because it's super strong and I don't feel like they're ever going to come off. Your elastic, I like to use this covert elastic I think it's called um, but just any elastic that you're happy with. Your ribbons, I'm currently using stretch ribbons. These ones are from tonju again but my personal choice is block. And then just some needles. I just use plain needles for the sewing and then I use a rounded needle for my darning. This is actually another thing. These are actually quite a cheat. I have loads of them. I got mine on Amazon and they're just to help you thread the cotton or anything that's a little bit thicker into the needle because this cotton is a bit thicker. Sometimes I really struggle and it just wastes so much time. And these are just, yeah, they're a cheat, but they're really quick at getting the thread through the needle and I also find it so helpful with the wool because obviously the wool is so thick how are you supposed to get that through a needle? So I'm gonna sew the elastics first because it's my least favourite part. I always like to get it done first but to measure how much elastic I just personally measure it off my last pair of shoes um, but if it's your first time definitely just try the shoe on. I like to sew them right on the edge here on the back and I always sew it downwards like this with some like quite a bit of extra here so there's enough to sew with. I find that if I sew it this way sideways on that it is can be quite irritating and painful on the heel so I always like to go this way. So when I'm sewing the elastic I always just flip the heel the other way so I can get a bit of grasp on it. Just pop it down. I've got a little knot in the end of my thread and I literally just catch it and go through it. These shoes are actually suede here on the heel so it's actually really difficult to sew through. I just go through the suede as many times as I can. I don't try and do it neatly at all because no one's going to see it but as you can see this suede is so tough to get through so that's why I always do this first because it's my least favourite part. So I start sewing from the bottom and I just catch it along as many times as I can. Along, as you can see, it's not neat at all. Um, and then when I get to the top here, I just like to go through the shoe through to the other side just to make sure it's 100% secure. As you can see, it's through there. I'll just make a little pinch through there, as you can see. It goes through there. And I just like to do them along the top just to secure it 100% so that I'm not worrying that that the elastic is going to come off. So that's just how I sew my elastic on. You can see there it's not very neat but it's really secure and then I'll just do it to the same on this side. So for the elastic ribbon that I have here I just like to sew it on right there by the seam and I'll just, ha I like to have a good amount here to work with and then what I do is I just start at the top and then I just do stitches all the way around again I really don't bother about it being neat it doesn't have to be neat it just has to stay put that's my main thing and I just go all around the whole ribbon I don't actually have to go through the shoe at this point because I'm just sewing through the canvas material that's on the inside and with this pair of block shoes it's quite thick so I don't have to go through the shoe at any point and there we have it one very secure 
ribbon. I'm now going to go on to the darning and like I said I like to use wool for my darning so what I do is I grab the end of the wool and I wrap it round my four fingers maybe four times until it gets to like a nice width. Um, I think it's personal preference how thick you want your darning. For me I think four times round is enough. And I'll just chop it then I'll measure this up against the box so that I know it's about the right size to sew around whether there's enough. I think that's perfect. For my darning I like to use a round needle. I got mine on Amazon. I think they might have been from Tonju again. There's like a big collection that you can get on Amazon with loads of different sizes and I like to use this kind of small around one for my darning. So I'll thread my needle and tie a knot in the end. I like to leave quite a nice amount at the end of the knot because you can chop it off at the end. And then what I do is always start from one of these corners. I like to start from this corner usually and I'll just go through. You have to be careful with wool because it does catch and pull so I, so I feel like you have to keep checking up on yourself the whole time that things aren't getting cut, caught or um, being like pulled along with the rest of the wool because it does catch quite easily. So then I will go through a little bit by where I just did. I don't like to make the gaps too far apart. As you can see it goes through there. It's quite fiddly. It gets quicker the more you do it. See there it's like all pulled up but you just need to, you know, don't keep pulling. Just like go back, notice where the knot is, release it and then pull a bit again. And see it does do that with this wool. Um, that's the only issue with wool. I just like the effect that wool gives. So you've not pulled it all the way through the wool and then I go back. You can see this circle here. I go back inside that circle and that's where the chain stitch happens. So we'll try again. Go through here and sometimes easier to just hold this while you're pulling it through. I like to usually use my legs and place the shoe in between my legs but I obviously can't right now because I'm filming. So there's the little circle that you haven't gone through yet, you haven't pulled it all the way and you're going to go back with that needle through the hole and pull it. So as you can see there's a tiny bit there, that's where the darning starts. Right, so I've done a little bit now because I just wanted to show you what it looked like. Kind of looks like that. This is what it should look like. I'm going to show you a bit more now so that you can see when I'm a bit further on. So I like to hold on to this loose circular bit here just to secure it. Then I go through, you can see there through the shoe, pull it through, just adjust to make sure it's still where we want it and then back through this loop. So you've come through down, you've come through up here, this is the loop that you pull, you're going back inside it and then we hold this just to make sure it's nice and neat and there's a stitch. So this is how I do it. Then when I get to the end, I don't do anything special. I just cut it off <laughs> and then I cut this off. And yeah, I just, you know, you can cut things halfway. Like for example, this is probably, yeah, this, this one is, thread is too long. I'll just cut the end off that. And it honestly doesn't matter because no one sees it that close. So this is what the finished shoe should look like. An elastic, both coming from the back two elastic ribbons sewn on there and there and then the darning here yeah, this is my finished darning this is what it should look like nice and neat with a nice base to stand on it's not super neat you can see here that's where i started and finished but it'll do, it'll last me a week, so I don't obviously want to spend ages and ages making everything perfect. But that's the rough idea. So that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching it and found some of my tips 
helpful and maybe you found a new technique of doing your darning or your sewing if you did then please do let me know in the comments because that would be really nice to see if anyone's actually got any use out of this and yeah i really hope you enjoyed if you did then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me and i will see you next week with another video bye